Hello, welcome back to our channel. And this time we are going to talk about crystal oscillator. So it's a st solid state device uh, that we will use for oscillation application to build the sinusoidal waveform, a linear waveform. So basically, if you recall, the most microcontrollers, they use the crystal oscillator as their clock source. So if you build an embedded system, or any automation system using the microcontroller, you will also notice you have this small device that is called as crystal resonator. And uh, that is used along with the external circuit to form an oscillator circuit. So you can see here, this is a resonator, which is a two pin device. And uh, when uh, and this comes in this uh, form and this comes in this form also. And then there is this integrated circuit. Uh, so this is a resonator and together they form an oscillator circuit that can produce a sinusoidal waveform as expected, which becomes a clock to your microcontroller board and the microcontroller itself. So... Uh, you see that this is a can, external can on the crystal oscillator and this uh, particular uh, number indicates the device type and uh, based on that you can refer to its data sheet. If you open this can actually, the internal structure of the qua of the crystal resonator looks like this. So you actually can see that what is inside. It's a solid state device. So essentially uh, it's a piezoelectric material uh, which is called as piezoelectric crystal, which is used as a frequency selective element. That is it selects only one frequency or it is tuned to only single resonant frequency. And uh, in that, uh, signal frequency it remains stable now we have discussed in our previous models the electronic oscillators using operational amplifier using bjt using fet and all that and we use the passive network such as rc or rl or even lc in the feedback loop and why not we go for electronic oscillator to generate sinusoidal waveform or non-sinusoidal waveforms or after all they are easy to build electronic circuits and simple to use why we need this uh, solid state device here and this is also quite large it's about the one to two centimeters long okay so the answer is why crystal oscillator because of its frequency accuracy it is very accurate in frequency so if you want to provide a clock to the microcontroller which is one megahertz so that one megahertz frequency will not uh, will not have any duplicate value, for example, 1.1 megahertz and so on. So it will be very accurate uh, during the manufacturing. More second reason is the stability. Stability provided by the crystal oscillator clock is very stable over time. And uh, due to the temperature variations, due to the variations, due to the vibrations, noise, pressure, etc., and also when uh, this device is uh, utilized to build the oscillator, it is providing us the low power consumption. Okay, so these are a few reasons. So let us now understand how this crystal oscillator works. So it's basically this uh, crystal oscillator, which is a piezoelectric material. It works on the principle of piezoelectricity. So when it is... Uh, experiencing an external force or pressure the material squeezes and expands that's the property of piezoelectric uh, material so when it squeezes or expands it produces an electric charge in proportional to the pressure applied on to the surface of this material and this effect is called as piezoelectricity and that's the basic principle of using it as a resonator so at a single frequency uh, based on the mass and the stiffness of this uh, piezoelectric material you have uh, resonant frequency and that becomes uh, your basis to build an oscillator so 
as I said, it works on the principle of e piezoelectricity. So when you apply an external pressure on this piezoelectric material, for example, as shown in the figure, so in the solid lines shows the piezoelectric material before being pressure or force being applied, and the dotted line shows the expansion in the horizontal direction both way of this uh, piezoelectric material when it experiences the external force of pressure this kind of expansion uh, is called as a mode shape and in particular this is called as longitudinal mode shape so piezoelectric material experiencing a force and it is getting stretched in the direction shown there is another another mode called as thickness shear mode so uh, you can see that the solid uh, square is the original material shape and after it experiences the force, for example, in the right direction and in the left direction. So this is called as thickness shear mode. This is called as flexural mode where your dotted line indicates the mode shape, uh, the kind of uh, movement or the position change of the crystal. This is called as phase shear mode. So you have this portion goes down, this portion goes up, this portion goes left and this portion goes right. And there is also very popular called as turning fork. So the solid lines, there are two uh, elements available here, but after they experiences the vibration in the up and down direction, look at the dotted lines indicating the oscillation mode shapes. So depending on in which direction you squeeze the material, that is the piezoelectric material, which is available in different shapes, different types, such as most common is the quartz crystal. And then there is this PZT, zinc, uh, aluminum nitride, and all those things are there. Now, when this uh, material undergoes a static force, you have a static movement. However, when this material undergoes a dynamic force, such as the force varying with respect to time, you have an oscillation in the circuit uh, and the oscillation frequency is determined by the mass and the spring constant of the system. So it behaves like a electronic RLC circuit, which also a tank circuit. So it's a tuned circuit or the tank circuit. And we have seen our previous model, how the L RLC tank circuit works. So why not go for RLC circuits, which is simple electronic circuit built using the passives? Why go for this piezoelectric crystal material? The answer is you want a very high Q factor in your clock uh, when you provide a clock to the microcontroller so that it has extremely it is extremely selective at one single frequency and it doesn't respond to any other frequency so that's called as resonator and the quartz provides externally extremely high quality factor as compared to rlc so rlc circuit has a quality factor in the range of 10 to 100 or maximum few few hundreds but the high quality factor with achievable with the piezoelectric material is in the thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, depending on the material geometry more shapes etc so that's the reason the quartz crystals helps us to provide extremely accurate stable clock so after seeing this oscillation mode shape, we can see what kind of frequencies are possible to produce uh, in electronic applications. So with the quartz crystal, you can produce the frequencies ranging from few tens of kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. So smaller the mass of the piezoelectric crystal, higher the frequency of the operation of the resonator circuit. So it's about the scaling effect. Nowadays, there is a MEMS technology, which stands for microelectromechanical system that allows us to precisely use the piezoelectric materials such as aluminum nitride, etc., to provide an innovative solution using crystal and uh, using oscillator and replace the crystal, traditional crystal. So MEMS technology is there to re reduce and replace the burden of uh, 
quartz crystal. Why? Because the problem with the crystal is its size and the weight. As I have shown in the previous slide, look at the size, few centimeters. So it takes a lot of space on the PC board when you do develop an embedded application. So you have microcontroller, a lot many other electronics, and this also takes a sizable amount of space. But using the MAMES technology nowadays, uh, you can uh, utilize the bulk acoustic wave resonators. That's not precisely a MEMS technology, but this is a part of it. And uh, in addition to that, you can also use the MEMS resonators. So advantage is that they, due to scaling, their mass is extremely small. They are nanometric size uh, devices, so they have very high frequency or resonance frequency which can be used for oscillation and also their size and the weights are extremely small. So where are the oscillators used? Especially we now talk about crystal oscillators. They are used in wristwatches, clocks, radios, computers and send phones. And now the efforts are going on to replace the crystal oscillators because of their problematic size and the weight to replace them with the bar as a bulk acoustic wave or surface acoustic wave or even the MEMS resonators and the oscillators. Okay, so still uh, the progress is going on and uh, in a few years we might see that crystal oscillators are not uh, available in wide uh, range of applications such as wristwatches, clocks, radio, which are commonly seen nowadays. But in few years to come, the research is going on to replace them with the bar resonator or the saw resonators. So how to represent the electronic behavior of the crystal oscillator? So answer is here. This is an equivalent model of the resonator. So here the C naught is the static or the inherent capacitance of the piezoelectric material. Remember the piezoelectric material is uh, the material which uh, has the piezoelectric material and uh, covered by the two electrodes deposited on it across which the charges are developed when this material experiences a uh, force. So this capacitor represents the capacitance of the piezoelectric material and the C1, L1 and R1, that's respectively motional capacitance, motional inductance, and motional resistance. And they, together, this forms a tank behavior or the resonance curve. The equivalent impedance of this network can be obtained by the impedance of this network in parallel with the impedance or reactance of the capacitance, which is expressed in the Laplace domain as given by Z of S with this uh, combination. So reactance uh, in the Laplace domain, reactance of the capacitance is 1 over S dot CO. And uh, it, total impedance of this RLC network in Laplace domain is 1 over SC1 plus SL1 plus R1. So once you do that and make this circuit vibrate, you have the resonance at the desired frequency of oscillation. For example, the frequency here is uh, seen to be about uh, 100 hertz, uh, 100,000 hertz, that is 100 kilohertz. And uh, you can also see that your uh, mag maximum magnitude. This part is called as anti-resonance or the resonance due to the inherent parasitic, which is the C naught. Okay, so the main resonance is right here, and this anti-resonance is due to this C part, C naught part, and C1, L1, R1 represents this resonance. Okay, now this uh, crystal is vibrating in a specific mode. However, due to uh, spurious modes as you can see that the main resonance is also here but the resonance may also experience the vibration as we have seen in our previous slides there are multiple modes of vibration so the force is in such a way that it is exciting the crystal not only at the main resonance but it can also excite the crystal at the higher frequencies of the mode so that's why this resonance are also coming here this is also the entire resonance for associated with each specific resonance mode so finally uh, if you open up the crystal the you just open the can and you will see inside 
this is a turning fork uh, that is commonly used in modern quartz watch uh, this is also the simple quartz crystal in the form of a disc uh, so and this is again a simple quartz crystal uh, it's it's a simple plate and across which uh, the top and the bottom of this plate uh, experiences uh, the force and it develops the charges here is also another view so hope you found this video useful uh, look at the scale here it is only 2 mm so you can see that how long it is just a 10 mm is the maximum length and it is uh, there so hope you found this video useful if you like this video click the like button put some comments as your opinion what you thought about this video and share it for a wider reach uh, and uh, stay tuned for more engaging contents like this. Till then, wish you happy learning.